Welcome, welcome, welcome. And this is your first time joining us, wherever you're watching this from. Uh, let me take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Samaria M. Covert. I am a licensed therapist with over 16 years worth of experience. Um, I have, uh, I'm a published author. My number one obsession, aside from therapy, is writing. And so I've written over 70, written and published over 70 books. And I am excited about that. Uh, how am I a little bit different as I give you faith-based principles uh, to bring my lasting change? I am unapologetically a Christian. Uh, I, uh, and these are pre-recorded and I think they're like two months in advance as of right now. My goal is to have these pre-recorded at least six months in advance. But I today have cried real tears, y'all. Uh, this book will be long out by the time y'all uh, watch this video. But my book called It Is Time to Heal. It is my most transparent book. Ooh, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> no, 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 don't do it. Um, but um I just talked about my journey overcoming being a quiet girl from a small town. Um, uh, that was uh, I have uh, overcome uh, isolation, being hidden, overcome I'm a survivor of uh, abuse and neglect. Um, and I don't say that, take that lightly. And so that was a book, uh, which I had not intended on doing, but where I begin to talk about how to heal. And I'm coming not necessarily from the, uh, the vein of a therapist, but I'm coming from the vein of just someone who has uh, overcome to become a success story. And uh, so hopefully you will pick up that book in two ways. That's not what we're going to talk about. There are about how do you have an excellent spirit? How do you have an excellent spirit? Now, uh, because this is not Bible study, I'm not going to go, uh, I'm, I'm going to use uh, the book of Daniel as our reference. However, I'm not going to go tick for tack and 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 and, uh, and really uh, highlight Daniel's life in the Bible. But I want you to know that Daniel was a, someone who uh, was exemplified an excellent spirit. And so we're going to talk about that today, because if you want to excel in life, uh, you want to have an excellent spirit. Let me give you an example. Um, when I first started my uh, private practice, this is really important for Christians. Uh, when I first started my um, uh, journey into my private practice some years ago, I've been in mental health for over 16 years, but I started my private practice in 2017. It's 2024 at the time that you are um, uh, viewing this. And so I was even then uh, unapologetic about my faith. And I started getting speaking engagements. I started having Obviously, clients were coming. I wasn't booked out, but they were coming. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and I started getting other Christians who reach out to me. They wanted to do business. They wanted to consult with me. Um, they wanted, uh, I was uh, getting requests for speaking engagements and all that. And let me, the reason I'm giving you this um, scenario here is this, is that in trying to interact and do uh, and do business, not necessarily my clients, not necessarily my, my therapy clients, but outside of that, other people identify as Christians and business leaders and other Christian therapists and counselors and all that. Uh, the unfortunate thing that I learned, beloved, or that I, I discovered was that Christians, people who identified as being, uh, having a faith that, that um, is the underlying root of that pushes them towards that purpose. Unfortunately, my experience was that they did not have a spirit of excellence at all. I had people... Um, uh, calling my business phone, but not telling me who they were or introducing themselves, which is not business etiquette. You know, when you don't know someone, you don't have a personal relationship, you call them, you introduce yourself. I had people who scheduled consultation meetings um, and they did not show up. Again, other business people. And again, that's a no-no in the in in the business world, regardless of what you do. You never schedule a meeting with someone because you have to respect people's time. And mind you, at that time, I was like kind of upset <laughs> because I'm like, how are you a Christian and you don't value my time? Because I had other clients that were also trying to schedule with me. And truth, the truth is, of the matter is, as a therapist, I get paid for my time. Uh, and so I now I'm scheduling a free consultation uh, for a business that's not mine. And you don't even show up or you show up late. Well, I had one person tell me he would call me at this time. He called me two days later. And so I say that to say, uh, and else just small things, but um, um, even in the bigger things, oftentimes when you identify as I'm a Christian or I'm a business owner, the world could care less. And they don't want to deal oftentimes with Christians because they lack a spirit of excellence or they have a spirit of entitlement that's supposed to be so successful and there's no 
backing, there's nothing to back it up. Uh, hold on for, I'm going to pause this for a minute. Someone said something to me. Hold on. Okay, so I had to pause for a minute. I just remember I had a conversation with someone. Sometimes people drop little nuggets of wisdom. I like to write it down. And I want this something, a, a huge nugget. And I just had to take a minute to stop. Anyway, so Christians, my experience had been that Christians did not have a spirit of excellence. They have a spirit of entitlement. Because we shout and we jump. We just think we're just supposed to have all these great uh, ac- accomplishments and acclimates. Because, but even though we haven't had a spirit of excellence, in our business. And so I want to tell you how to have a spirit of excellence, but you cannot ride on the fact no one cares. And I mean this respectfully, uh, my good Christians, that you shout, that you speak in tongues, or that you sold your seed. We just don't care in the business world. Now, granted, that's helpful, but you're not going to uh, absorb the fact that you still need to have a business etiquette. Okay. Uh, no one cares, you know, and, and this, I mean this respectfully, um, no one's going to give you business or, or, uh, or promote you uh, for the most part some people will absent from uh, um, a spirit of excellence you know uh, a spirit of excellence is what really promotes you and so I, I say that to say I know that's, that sounds mean but uh, oftentimes in our faith we are taught God is going to bless us and God loves us and I, I truly believe that and I want you to believe that and I want you to rest on that into into that but I also want you to know that no one's going to hand you anything just on the basis of the fact of your Christian. Sometimes we're taught we're blessed, 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 blessed. No, so much. We don't even understand that you have to show up and show a, a spirit of excellence in what you are trying to achieve. You can hear how blessed you are that you don't understand process and you are so entitled that you think just because you're supposed to. And so I kind of learned it the hard way. And I was talking to God, you know, that God is my bestie, okay? And he says, Samaria, you're going to have to set some boundaries on how, how people will interact with your time because they got time, you don't. And so I had to set something. This is why I don't do, um, I am relaunching my consultation business, but I don't do free consultations to this day. I'm not going to do business with someone uh, again, this is outside of my therapy practice, y'all remember this because I, I do other things. I'm not going to con- collaborate with someone, a partner with someone on the basis I like you and on the basis that you're a Christian. Congratulations. We will be together in heaven <laughs> when that time comes. Thank you, Jesus. It does not mean you're qualified to even be, to partner with me. And I'm, that's just how I take things because I have more, more at risk because you, you just, we, we shout together and we love Jesus. Yeah, and and I, and I and I hope I'm making I'm making sense here. Not trying to be offensive. Your confession of faith means that you have you 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 love you you have a relationship. Well, maybe your confession of faith. Maybe not, you know. Let me not go there. I won't say <laughs> it means something, but it does not mean that by default you're going to be successful. You have to be intentional about having a spirit of excellence. Now, uh, again, I'm going to uh, uh, reference some things from Daniel, but I want you to, those Bible readers and Bible scholars, and hopefully you are, if you want to have a spirit of excellence, you want to read this on your own time. But Daniel 5, uh, t- uh, t- verse 12, and I'm going to read this from the New King James Version. It reads, Inasmuch as a spirit of excellence, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, the the... Uh, New Living Translation so solving problems and explaining enigmas were found in David, who the king named Belshazzar. Let now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. So Daniel was promoted because he had a spirit of excellence, not because he had a relationship with God, but he was promoted because he had a spirit of excellence. And his spirit of excellence gave him knowledge, understanding, the ability to interpret dreams and riddles. See, a man's gift is what scripture says, uh, uh, makes room for you and presents you to great men. It says nothing about your character. So you can present yourself or have a gift that presents for great men and, 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 and in and, and six months, a year or two, you 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 riding on selfies. I met such and such, and you had a selfie next to them, but you're not in their life right now because you didn't have a sort of excellence. So point number one, uh, and I have to thank y'all for chiming in here. An excellent spirit starts with a posture of excellence in your heart. It is a part of your 
heart posture first. Uh, and I told you this a while back, you can be someone that is doing all the right actions, actions, but your motives are wrong. And it's always going to be cracks in your foundation when motives are wrong. So Luke 6, 45 says a man, uh, a man, oh, excuse me, let me, <laughs> let me read this again. Luke 6, 45, New King James Version, a good man out of the treasure of his own heart brings forth good and evil out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth does what speaks what you put in what you meditate on if you speak nasty that means you got nasty in your heart if you speak in excellence and i'm not talking about diction i'm talking about what your verbiage is it is it is indicating you have an excellent spirit by what you constantly talk about. If you're constantly talking about gossip, rumor, division, uh, 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 backbiting and things of that nature, that's that's not an excellent spirit. You don't have an excellent spirit. But if you do, if, you, if you're talking faith and you're studying all those things, that means you have an excellent spirit. So you don't have versus you do. Point number two, in order to get an excellent spirit, you have to have a disciplined life with a regular routine of healthy habits. What is a habit, Samaria? A habit is something I do repeatedly. So uh, Daniel, and this is what we should do, have an active study life, an active prayer life, and have commitments. Have commitments. What did that mean? It means things that I am committed to doing every day, action steps. What do I study? I study my word, but I also study my field of practice. I study uh, uh, um, my skill set. I develop that by study and in prayer. You can tell when someone does not have an excellent spirit. I call this the microwave generation. We want anointings and greatness to be birthed out and uh, 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 through, an, through a microwave mentality but real anointing and real processes and real greatness is 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 birthed out through the slow cookers of life uh-huh all right so point number three you don't shortcut the process when you understand uh uh, uh we're trying to have excellent spirit there was a uh a young gentleman named dr malachi love you can look him up dr malachi i think robinson love i think um Anyway, he decided he wanted all the time he wanted to be a medical doctor. So he's about 19 years old. He would do some classes for, I think, I don't know, uh, some herbal medicine doctor. Uh, started practice, put an MD behind his name, wore a, a, a white coat, and had a stethoscope. Dr. Love had a dream all of his life. Like I said, he wanted to be a doctor. What was the problem? Why was Dr. Love arrested? And then why did he spend time in jail for fraud? Medicaid fraud, Medicare, I don't know exactly the fraud, but it's not healthcare fraud. Well, because Dr. Malachi, who spoke excellently, never went to medical school. Why? Because he wanted to shortcut the process. He wanted the title, come on here, I'm talking good, all without process. And a lot of people want anointings, positions, platforms, and titles without process and we can tell when you have no process so eventually he got caught and he was arrested for what fraud when you have an excellent spirit you don't shortcut the process you because i want to be a doctor i want to be md i want to be this i want to be excellent in business and so you go back to what I said at first, you study. That's why I didn't just say study the word you yes, you study the Bible, but you study your field of practice, you go to school, you learn of God. And you have a commitment. I want to be an A student. I don't just want to be a student. I want to be an A student. And sometimes excellence does not mean perfection. It doesn't. Because sometimes you do the best you can and the best you're going to be. But is it the best that you can do? That is the question. So Dr. Malachi wanted to shortcut the process. And he sounds like, you Google his, if you Google him, he speaks very well. He sounds like if he just, and, and, uh, if he just stopped trying to push things if he just if he just if he just submitted to the process he would have got there uh-huh so you 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 when you don't have an excellent spirit you keep trying to mm, 
You don't. You don't submit to a process. Point number four, uh, when you have excellent spirit, you embrace conflict. You don't run away from it, but you have also the spirit of wisdom to you find solutions. So people don't have a spirit of excellence. They just sit around talking and talk. This is what we can do. I, I don't understand why we're doing this. Why are we doing that? When you, when God is giving you a spirit of excellence, it comes with wisdom because that spirit of excellence causes you to solve problems. And that's what Daniel did. He interpreted dreams. He gave wise counsel. He understood how to connect with the right people. Shadmack, Meshach, and Abednego. So you cannot have a spirit of excellence and you surround yourself with silly people. So he knew how to surround himself with right people. And because of that, him and his people were promoted. So, but why, why was that? Because he had a reputation. Cause once you have a, 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 a reputation, he had a reputation of excellence and he had a reputation of helping to solve problems. An excellent spirit solves problems uh we have excellent spirit you are trained you are skilled and you are developed say it with me again trained skilled and developed now i did say in one old teacher i thought i can't remember which one was it y'all i i do I, I had done a lot of these um about your success i said that when you tell people that the anointing, and I meant that thing with my whole heart. And I'm not taking it back. When you tell people, you just shout now, God gonna give it to you. You can, when people are promoted to positions of authority and prominence, absent from training, skill, and development, you are a fraud. I meant that. I said, I meant it. I said, I meant it. When you have an excellent spirit, you don't, you're not just trained, um, you're trained, you're skilled and you're developed and the anointing meets you. Everything that God does, he prepares us. Now you may not, have, it doesn't mean you're going to be prepared in the same way. You may not necessarily have to get a degree. You understand what I'm saying? You can train and develop in anything. Okay, you don't need a degree all the time. <laughs> and I know I'm not against degree people. You know, I got I got some degrees now. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you got to go and get a PhD in excellence. I'm not saying that, but you you have a a, a, a routine of, of of intentionally training yourself, skilled, studying. Now, Shalom would do wonderful things. He really would give you nice exercise. God helps the praises of our people. But you don't get put in positions of prominence because you shout real good. Cause you hold your head and squalling <laughs> real good. That, that, that's cute. That's, that's very cute. Excellence is I'm trained. I'm skilled. I'm developed. And I have a routine of studying. Okay. When you have an excellent spirit, you know, you're not compromising. Even in tough times, tough times. Cause you know, again, you look at the story of Daniel, we uh, the infamous story Daniel in the lions then Daniel uh and the three Hebrew boys in the in the fire why did he have to experience the lions in the fire because he refused to compromise and to to submit to the pressure of that day so you will never have a a spirit of excellence when you have a spirit of compromise when you make it your business I'm not going to compromise no matter how hard it gets God endorses you and you have a spirit of excellence. So when you have a spirit of excellence, you're not compromised. I don't care what y'all do. I don't care if I lose my job. I don't care what I lose. I don't care if I lose my reputation. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. If I got to go to the lions, then I'm going to go. If I, if I'm in the fire and if I die, let me, that's what, ain't that the way Esther said? She said, if I die, let me die. If I got to go. So when you have a spirit of excellence, you are flat-footed. And I don't care what it costs you. Because sometimes when you really do it, because we can all shout, hey, spirit of excellence, hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all like how I did that? Okay. <laughs> when you really have a spirit of excellence, um, it may cost you something because you're honest. You know, you could be at the workplace and everybody else is stealing and doing something. You say, no, I'm not doing that. Everyone else is going left, you're going right. You don't go with the crowd. 
You don't just bow to the to the age to, to the system of this age. You stand flat footed. I'm gonna stand on my integrity. I'm gonna stand on honesty. I'm gonna stand. You're not compromising. Remember this when you have a spirit of excellence, and I'm gonna teach you how to have a spirit of excellence in a minute. I kind of gave you some clues. Uh, remember, your commitment to excellence is what promotes you and it puts you in the hands of great men. Because great men, uh, say the king uh, at that time, uh, have people that they cannot trust. They have advisors. It just it happens because whenever whenever you are someone that people see and you are um, uh, like a definition of success, any type of leader, business leader, uh, church leader, a governmental leader, uh, you have people that are very... Uh, lustful for positions, if you will. And so um, it is so important that people, that leader, one of the things that they lack, but they need is trustworthy, but skilled people. And so you can have someone in your, in your circle that's skilled, but not trustworthy. You can have someone that's trustworthy and not skilled. You understand what I'm saying? And so sometimes leaders have had to felt like they had to compromise because they needed people, but they d dealt with people who uh, sometimes y'all deal with people who have neither. <laughs> uh, and so it's so. Uh, what happened with Daniel is because he has such an atmosphere, he has such a reputation of excellence. It promoted him because it showed that he was trustworthy. He was trustworthy to God. Why? Well, because God going to reveal to him secrets of the of the age to come, which is an indication of an excellent spirit. When God can trust you, let's be clear: God cannot trust everyone, but also his reputation made him trustworthy to the kings. And to the king of that time, because he was, he had a commitment to God. Sometimes we have a spirit of excellence. People may not agree with your God, but they will agree with your method because they understand that at the end of the day, I don't have to agree with them, but I respect their integrity and the honesty by which they operated. Okay. I said a mouthful there, but that'll, that'll preach right there. Uh, when you have an excess for you don't got to jock, jockey for permit. <laughs> when you have an excess for you don't have to jockey for permission for positions, excuse me, positions, positions, positions. When you have an excellent spirit, you don't have to jockey for positions. A number, not a number, but a, a, a real uh, way that you know someone does not have an excellent spirit is that they play office politics or church politics, try to get next to who's who. They don't have the excellent spirit because there is always an era of manipulation of deception uh, when you try to posture yourself in that way. Uh -huh. And so, but Daniel did not have to go and say, I, I want to be Daniel, hallelujah. And I, you know, he didn't have to try to get next to a king or get next to someone of importance. His spirit of excellence promoted him. He just decided not to compromise. And that's what made him trustworthy. So he didn't have to jockey. When God is really on your side and you operate in that spirit of excellence, you don't got to jockey for positions. They do, you know. Uh, point number nine, you have a spirit of excellence. You have integrity, honesty, and godly character. And remember this, and that's behind the scenes and in front of people. So when you have a spirit of excellence, the person that people see in front of people is the person that is behind the scenes. You, 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 we not, you're not compartmentalizing yourself, you know, when in, in front of people, you're nice and, 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 and wonderful and behind the scenes, you're nasty and no one likes you. There's the, <laughs> there, now there, uh, now I, I understand the, the, uh, idea of not telling everyone everything you get what I'm saying so, so you don't always reveal your whole health your whole self and your whole hand uh, in front of people that you don't know I get that so everybody don't have access or intimate access to you so that's not what I'm implying however uh your character watch it if you can be kind and nice and, and committed in front of people that's one thing and then behind the scenes you something else you don't have a spirit of excellence. So, so remember, remember this godly character is this character is not defined by what you do when people are watching rather is what you do when people are not watching. And remember one thing that got Daniel into trouble was because he continued to pray three times a day and he didn't know anyone was watching when they made it decree, you can't pray. That's what Daniel, Daniel kept right on. He had a commitment and remember routine of acting, of praying three times a day and they observed him. And that's why they tried to get him. They tried to get him uh, before the king because he, would, he wouldn't stop his regular routine. He wasn't praying to be seen by people. He was praying into his relationship with God. 
And that's what gave him an excellent spirit. So I would encourage you, read the book of Daniel. And as y'all always say, I love reading the Bible from different translations. King James Version will give you some amazing nuggets. The New Living Translation, I've always said, is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, the New King James Version, the Living Bible, BibleGateway.com. It's not sponsored by them. And just compare notes and then start looking and see how can I have a spirit of excellence? When you have a spirit of excellence, God trusts you. And I said something, I got to say it again because it's profound. God does not trust everybody. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. He looks at these hearts and said, mm, you may be my child, but I don't trust you. It's the same way with the, those of y'all who have children. Uh, you know, you got that, you got, you can have three children. You got that one child that is just going to tear up the whole house. Anything that happens, you're going to look at them. Come here, little Jojo. What did you do? Ah, you did your finger, for, and, and you know that you can't trust them. But you got that one child, you can leave them by themselves. They go, they go, they are trustworthy. And it's not about showing favor. You see the heart. You see that one one child is acting up. That's how God is. It doesn't mean He doesn't love you, and it doesn't mean He shows favor. But He knows the children. He that's why you gotta ask God and have discernment about who you allow in your circle. But God knows. He look at that heart, saying, "Uh, uh-uh, that person." They sound good. They're talking good. They got gifts, talents, and ability, but they don't got my heart. Move on from that person, right? And so when you are a friend of God, God can trust you. And we know this is exemplified in the life of Daniel because if you look at Daniel chapter 10, God began to speak to Daniel in open visions. And then God said, you are beloved by me, Daniel. Don't be afraid. And he gave him prophetic words that we are still seeing now played out in, in the in the book of Daniel. I think they started, I believe it started Daniel chapter 10. I may be mis- I'm mistaken about that. And it still played out in Revelations. God gave Dan- Daniel secrets that he wouldn't have otherwise know. God, Jesus told the disciples, you have been chosen to understand the secrets of the mysteries of the kingdom of God and others have not. When God trusts you, he will reveal to you the secrets of the age. He will reveal to you other secrets because you're not judging people. You're just praying and interceding. So God trusts you and you are his friend. And God loves everyone, but everybody is not God's friend, believe it or not. I know that sounds uh, like a uh, 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 hypocrisy. God, just because you can love someone and, and not trust them. You can love someone and not be a friend to them because you know what's in your heart. That's why the scripture says that uh, they committed themselves to Jesus, but he knew what was in their heart. So he did not commit himself to them. When God trusts you, you don't got to say, God said he trusted me and big, big old shirt says God trusts me. It is exemplified in your spirit and how God speaks to you. When God trusts you, he will speak to you about what's on his heart. So we talk to God about what's on our heart, but can he talk to you about what's on his heart? There's a divine exchange. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, This is a bonus. Sometimes we have a spirit of excellence. It may bring jealous people, but remember God is for you. And again, if you go back to the life of Daniel, what happened? His spirit of excellence uh, promoted him, but but the other leaders who were promoted, who were not promoted uh, 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 at the same way, because he was promoted above the the, the sorcerers and the soothsayers and the the fortune tellers because of the spirit of excellence and his power he operated, which is the power of God was much greater. So it brought a lot of persecution to Daniel. So because that spirit of excellence promotes you, it's going to be somebody like, why him? Why he, why he next to the king? I can't help it. I'm excellent. So you got to be intentional about your excellence. But it's not so you're not going to jump and shout. It's that God, God said you're going to be excellent. What are you doing? Are you studying? Are you reading? Are you developing? Are you are you are you praying? Are you surviving? Are you are you compromising or not compromising? God rewards excellence. So Romans eight thirty three. But I'm going to read this one from the New Living Translation. And we're going to talk about how you overcome, you become excellent. Who dares accuse you? Who dares accuse us, whom God has chosen for His own? Daniel survived accusations. They, 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 they accused him of not being loyal to the king because he wouldn't bow. Watch this. No one, for God himself has given us right standing with him. The other translation reads, if God is before you, 
Who can be against you? You don't need to hook up from some great man when you got Daniel, when you got God on your side. God is for you. Hallelujah. Uh, again, um, and I said this before, but we're not compromising despite opposition and persecution. When you have this level of excellence fear, you will experience persecution and opposition because you're not going along to get along. Sometimes your excellence will make people who have a perverted or fraudulent spirit nervous. All right, so how do I have an excellent spirit? I gave you some great tools already. One, make a commitment. For God, I live and for God, I die. Uh, Joshua said, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So make a commitment to serve God and be excellent, even if it costs you something. God will always reward you in this life and in the life to come, what the scripture says. Determine, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to give up. Regardless of how hard I have gone through some things. And I remember I had to tell myself, you know what, Samaria, it's okay. I can do a hard thing. I can do a hard thing. I would imagine it was scary when this decree went out. It was probably scary when uh, Daniel was being threatened with uh, a fiery furnace. We don't talk about that. He just didn't allow his fear to stop him. He got in that, that furnace and God saved him. It was, I would imagine, it's, have you went to the, go to the zoo <laughs> and look at these big old lions and they're behind cages. Now you imagine somebody throwing you in a lion thing, a bunch of cages and these lions looking back at you. These things are huge and got these big old uh, things here. Think about it. He was in a lion's den. Them lions looking at him and he looking at them. And they was hungry, but the Lord closed their mouth. Come on here. He he didn't allow the threat or the spirit of intimidation to stop him. And that's how you have to be when you have an excellent spirit, particularly in this age, uh, because they persecute Christians. Okay. And definitely different parts of the world as well. Um, you will have a test. Watch this. Your, your, your integrity will be tested. We all can say, I have a spirit of excellence. <laughs> you know, we can all do that. That's cute. That, that's really cute. But it's going to be tested. It's going to be tested. Now, when you pass the test, then you are promoted. Don't listen to me. Uh, don't despise. Dis, mm, Lord, let me, let me speak. Hold on. Don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise it. Zechariah 14. Do not despise these small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Zechariah 14, don't despise small beginnings. Remember, big dreams and big visions and big organizations started small. And oftentimes you will find that people who are naive, who are naive, who need validation, they want to go big, but they don't understand process. See, you start small and you remain excellent each step of the way and you pass the test and tests can be hard. It's not, it's not, you know, you, you're not going to shout in three days and, and, and this is in, this in your hand when you got us testing you, but you keep pursuing God's best and you pass each test. And when you are faithful over a few things, that's what it says in Matthew 25, 23, then he will make you ruler over many. Daniel was faithful to not at the beginning of the, of the chapter to not eat the king's meat because it was customary the only time the people of Israel didn't eat certain foods and he didn't compromise he was faithful in interpreting a dream he was respectful that's another thing excellent does it is respectful to people in positions of authority in front of their face and behind their backs you anybody can be respectful in front of somebody's face what do you do behind their back that 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 says a lot. Daniel prayed. He interpreted dreams when he was set before the king, even though the king was wrong for allowing these decrees, these negative and uh, uh, decrees to come. He was wrong for that. You don't uh, uh, use a decree to, to persecute the people of Israel, the people of God. He was wrong, but that Daniel didn't come and tell him, well, you know, you, you know, you, you, you know, you did not, blah, 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 blah. No, he confronted him with love. He always honored the king's position, even though the king was wrong. So even when a leader or a king or someone has a kingly anointing or your supervisor 
or whomever, when they are wrong, it doesn't mean you don't say anything because Daniel clearly said something, but how you approach things that you can confront people with love. Daniel, if you go look at the book. I mean, again, it's a whole, whole, it's a lovely book. That's why I'm kind of just perusing over. We can't sit here and read it. But when he got before the king, he said, oh, great king. He, he, he complimented him. He, um, he honored his position of authority. And then he interpreted a dream or he did what God, even when he was getting ready to go into, to, the, to the den and the fiery furnace. He said, you know, we still not going to compromise, but if God save us, let him save us. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. He never stepped out of character. So when you see these people going on saying, this, this such and such person, let me tell you what, what this great leader did to me. Da -da 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 -da. That ain't God. And again, don't mean you don't say, don't, don't mean you can't say nothing. Right? But an excellent spirit approaches uh, authority with respect, but this is what the word of God has to say. So let me read Matthew 25, 20, then we're done for today. Um, I want to read that because I did uh, write that out in the New King James Version. And he said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We think God is telling us, well done, that good and faithful servant. Enter into heaven. And it does mean that, but I want you to catch the biblical principle here on earth. When, when we have done well where we're at, he says, you have been faithful over a few things. Now let me make you a ruler. What did, what did Daniel become? He didn't become uh, 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 the king. He came, he became the second man in charge. He became a ruler because he was faithful over a few things. And in this generation, let me tell y'all, I'm, I'm almost done, y'all. We got people, you want to be rulers over organizations, rulers over all kinds of stuff, rulers. And you just think I'm going to jump and shout because I'm gifted and talented. I'm going to be a ruler. I'm going to be a leader. And it doesn't work that way. And I gave you the example of Daniel, but we can go scripture by scripture, precept upon precept. That's not, that's not how that works. He was faithful over a few things. He had integrity behind the scenes. He had godly character in secret places. And then God promoted him openly because another scripture that said that everything hidden will be revealed. That's good or bad. So I want you to commit to have an excellent spirit because what happens, you keep having an excellent spirit in secret places and in hidden places. God will reward you openly and you will be a ruler. But now you are a ruler with God's Heart. All right, y'all. We're done for the day. I'm Dr. Samaria M. Cobra. You can check me out at Uh, You'll request speaking engagements. All of my books are available for, not all of them, but a lot of them are available for digital download or paperback. You can go to my website for that. I have t shirts, I have all kinds of fun things, a blog. Uh, uh, keep up with me there as far as uh, when to, you know, my speaking engagements and when they will be available, whether it be private settings or in a public space. Just go to my website at www.drsamaryclover.com. Of course, I have uh, a training uh, program called um, for training Christian leaders called trainingchristianleaders.com. Uh, and of course, if you're located in the state of North Carolina or you can get yourself to the state of North Carolina, uh, my practice is www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. Um, and I'll be glad to see you. We do accept most insurances. If you are not located in the state of North Carolina and you cannot get here, you want to go to www.psychologytoday.com. Okay, this is not sponsored by them, but they will assist you in finding a therapist in your area. If you are ready for success, have an excellent spirit, y'all. Have an excellent spirit. Love you guys. We'll be back in the day and the time. Another banger, y'all. Bye.